The following is a production of CUTV Sports. As the year 2015 continues to unfold, PSAC West basketball continues with its next chapter here at the Convocation Center in California, Pennsylvania, where the Rock of Slippery Rock come into town to take on the hometown California Vulcans. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to the Convocation Center alongside of Damon Matson. My name is Cody Jeanette. We're delighted you could be with us today. And Damon, both of these teams in their last games uh, a week ago had some pretty big significant wins. That's right, both these teams did have big wins in their last game. Of course, the Vulcans winning 63-58 to in overtime over Gannon. Khalil Jabby had 15 points, 13 of those coming in the second half and overtime. And then Slippery Rock also winning 72-60 to over Clarion. Malcolm Richardson got 13 points in 23 minutes of playing time. Now, it was almost 51 weeks ago to the day that these last two teams squared off. California and Slippery Rock and that game was back up at Slippery Rock and it was a thriller. That's right that game about a year ago was a great game. Slippery Rock just beating Cal 64 to 53 in overtime so look for another exciting matchup here today in California Pennsylvania. Yeah California is definitely going to be hungry for a win after that overtime loss that these two teams met and the guy that's going to be leading the charge for those hungry Vulcans our player to watch for today Armin Marks. Marks did have a big game. He had 14 points and eight rebounds versus Gannon. So look for him to have a be a huge factor in this game today. And on the other side of the ball for the Rock, the ever so dominant Antonio Butler is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Butler is going to have a big impact on this game. I'm pretty sure. 21 points, seven for eight on his free throws, and seven rebounds versus Clary. And he had a big impact on the last game for Slippery Rock. He might have another big impact today. Well, it's a slightly snowy day outside here at California, but that's not going to stop these two teams from squaring off here on the court at the Convocation Center in California, Pennsylvania. Tip-off is next here on CUTV. NCAA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride, and I'm pleased to share the best news of all, student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at d2sa.org. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. You just heard the moment of silence for Shanice Clark, um, the California women's basketball forward that just recently passed away. Very unfortunate event, but uh, the emotions have been running high all game long here. California's women just had a big win against Slippery Rock. It was a uh, certainly a fun game to watch, and uh, it was a good memory, a good memory of Shanice all throughout the game. And now, Damon, we as we welcome everybody back, let's take a look at our tail of the tape for today's game again with the men. 
Yeah, you can take a look at the table of the tape here. Slippery Rock, of course, getting just a few more points per game than Cal, as they are up at about 77. But it looks like it's going to be a back and forth kind of game here today. Uh, the three point percentages as well are about the scene. These two teams look very even in the tail of the tape. So it's going to be a very good matchup to watch here this afternoon. Yeah, and that's what the uh, tail of the tape looked very similar to last year whenever they, these two teams went into uh, the extra period of play. So who knows? There might be a uh, close contest here today or um, if one team can get control and run away. But uh, right now we're going to take a look at um, we're going to take a look at some of the some of the matchups that are going to be coming up here. The, the starters are going to be announced here momentarily. There's one minute left on the game clock. And now we're going to look at the California starters for today. Leading the way, number five, Jake Jakubik. Number 11, Khalil Jabby will also be taking a start. He had 15 points in the previous game that the Balkans played. And number 15, Armin Marks. Number 21, Richard Smith will also be starting for the Vulcans today. And number 22, Tony Richardson to line up the starting five for the Vulcans. And on the other side of the ball, for the Rock of Slippery Rock, number 11, Kelvin Goodwin. Number 15, Frank Holloway. Number 23, Antonio Butler. Number 24, Jamal Gottely and number 30, Cornelius Brown. And those do round out the starting five for both teams, and it's both teams throwing out some good starters out onto the floor, and uh, we'll see what kind of pace this game starts out with. I'm interested to see if it's gonna be a defensive struggle off the bat, or if it's gonna go up and down the court with a lot of uh, three-point shots and a lot of points scored to start the game. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough to tell, but it looks like uh, looks like Cornelius Brown, the six foot nine center, will be stepping in center court to take the opening tip. California still has yet to break their huddle to see who will oppose him. It is likely to be Richard Smith. He's also six foot nine, so that'll be a height matchup for the opening tip. Twenty fresh minutes on the clock. Both of these teams are ready to go. Cornelius Brown, like I said before, is at center court, ready to take the opening tip, as is Richard Smith, ready to take the tip. California in the white jerseys will be traveling from left to right, and Slippery Rock in the dark green jerseys will be going from right to left. Opening tip won by California. At the top of the key now, that's Smith. Smith sends it over on the far side to Jabby. Jabby looking for an opening, but he sends it back up at the top for Jackie Pick instead. Swing across for Marks. Marks, jumper for two. No good, the rebound. Scrambled, rebounded by Slippery Rock. And a good jump shot attempt there by Marks. Just wasn't able to put it into the basket. And now we'll see what Slippery Rock does on the other side of the court. California comes up empty after winning the tip. Now Holloway with it. Holloway hands it off to Gatley. Over on the far side now, that's Goodwin. Down in the corner. Holloway, jumper for three, that's good. It's 3 nothing Rock. And a smooth shot there by Holloway. Looks like Slippery Rock was setting up to take those three-point shots. We'll see if they continue to do that as the game goes along. Jabby with it now, sends it near side to Marks. Marks over to Jackie Beck at the top. On over to Smith. Smith tries to drive, but sends it back out. Jackie Beck has it, 15 on the shot clock. Jabby over on the far side to Marks. Down low, that's Richardson. Layup for two is no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock. And now the Rock driving back up the court with it again. Underneath, that's Brown. Trying to send it back out, but we have a whistle on the court. And on the other side of the court there, Richardson tried to put that one home with a slam dunk attempt. It just didn't go, as it looks like he caught some of the rim, and it ended up being an opportunity for Slippery Rock at the other end of the court. So now California will have possession. Khalil Jabby will be leading the charge back up. 18.30 left to go in the first half. The Rock is up 3-0. Marks gives it to Richard Smith. Jabby, jumper for two. In and out of the hoop, no good. The rebound goes to Slippery Rock. Now here comes Kelvin Goodwin. Spin around Jabby, nice move. Gives it off underneath Butler. Shot gets blocked, rebound by Marks. California, see if they can come up the court and get an attempt on 
Get and shot here, into the net. And here they come. The slam dunk attempt fails by Richard Smith. And Slippery Rock with another quick rebound. California can't seem to get much clicking for them here early on. Jumper for three. That is good. It's 6 nothing Rock. And the missed opportunities that Cal is having on the other end of the court are resulting in opportunities for Slippery Rock. And thus far, it's allowed them to get out in front in this game. We'll see if the Falcons can't turn that around. It is 6 nothing Rock. Smith has it. He sends it back out to Jakubik. Jakubik at the top. On over to Jabby. Jabby jumper for two. In and out, no good. The rebound goes to Slippery Rock. Here they come back up the court. One on three. He's going to try to keep it for himself, but the shot gets blocked, and we have a foul. And another missed opportunity there for the Vulcans at the other end of the court. Good transition game thus far. They're able to get back and try to defend against the Slippery Rock's attack. And they're keeping it contained for now, but you'd like to hope the Vulcans can get some points on the board here very soon. Calvin Brown is ready to check in for the Balkans. He's over at the scorer's table. Calvin Goodwin from the free throw line. First shot up, first shot good. He is an 85.4% free throw shooter from the free throw line on the season. So a dangerous guy to have at the free throw line, especially later on in the game. We'll have to keep an eye if that is a factor if he gets to the free throw line. 7 nothing Rock pending this next foul shot. And it sinks through to make it 8 nothing Rock. California still shut out here early on. Khalil Javi will lead the charge. Back up for the Vulcans. Up at the top for Smith. Smith over to, over to Brown. Brown looks underneath. Can't find many options. Gives it over to, to Javi instead. Javi finds Smith. Now back to Javi. Underneath. That's Brown trying to drive through. Put up a layup and... There's, they're going to call a jump ball here, and it is Slippery Rock's possession. And Brown was just trying to force his way in the paint there to the basket, trying to get something going for the Vulcans. Almost was able to break through, but gets the jump. Well, it would have been a jump ball, and it gives it to Slippery Rock. Now Gadalese finds Butler up near midcourt. Finds Frank Holloway over on the far side. Jumper for three. That's off the front of the rim. No good. The rebound comes to Marks. Here come the Vulcans, back up the court. Marks finds a lane, drives, foul, and it's no good on the shot. Well, Marks now gets the opportunity to get to the free throw line, trying to get the Vulcans their first points of the game. That'll be a big answer after eight straight consecutive points to start this game by Slippery Rock. Armin Marks is a 70% free throw shooter on the season. The senior out of Louisville, Kentucky. First shot up, first shot good. California has points on the board. It is eight to one. That's a big first free throw attempt right there that he makes. It gets California a point on the board and a little bit of momentum in their favor. Now we'll see what he does with the second shot. Eight to two is now the score after a successful second shot. The Rock will inbound it. Kelvin Goodwin will lead the charge. 16-25 left to go in the first half. Butler with it now. Looking for options. Sends it across the court for Goodwin. Goodwin back to Butler. Butler finds underneath almost a slam dunk attempt, but the pass got pushed away at the last possible second. That was some good defense right there by the Vulcans, able to get back. They saw the opportunity uh, developing in front of them, and they were able to defend it very well. Butler has it now at the top. Now Goodwin with it. Goodwin looking for a lane. Jumper for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. The rebound. Will come into California's possession. Khalil Jabby with it after a nice control by Brown. Jabby, no shot. It's no good. And that brings us to under 16 minutes. So there's going to be a stoppage on the court. And that was a good recovery there by Brown as he was able to get that ball and get the Vulcans back up the court. So good job there by the Vulcans. And the shot did not count because Jabby committed an offensive foul on his way in. So. And that is his first. Both teams have one foul now in total. And I'm interested to see if the Vulcans, they've, I've seen Slippery Rock come out with a lot of energy as they've been able to get that transition game going with getting rebounds and getting to the other end of the court. Now, taking a look at the PSAC West standings, Damon, I mean, we're nearly halfway through the season. Slippery Rock and California really battling it out for that fourth spot, and this is proving to be a pivotal game as to who gets control of it. Yeah, they are. As you can see there, Slippery Rock 9-4 and four, and California 8-5 and five in the PSAC. It is a battle for that fourth spot, and I think 
whoever wins this game has a lot of momentum going forward into the season to try to climb up the ladder and get to where Indiana, Gannon, and maybe even Mercyhurst could be. And Gannon did win earlier, so that moves them up even further in the standings. But an interesting thing to note, Mercyhurst, who's in first place, has the same overall record as Slippery Rock, but Slippery Rock's record is much worse within the PSAC, so that gives them the upper hand. And now, see that slam dunk attempt get missed. That's one of the things, one of the early miscues that the Vulcans had, just unfortunate and couldn't get them any points on the board. That's right, just missed opportunities by the Vulcans, and on top of that, Slippery Rock's able to make two uh, three-point attempts so far, and that has helped them get to this 8-2 to two lead early on in this game. 15-57 left to go in the first half. California will be inbounding it from underneath their own basket. Jabby finds Brown. Goes over to Marks. He hands it back off to Jabby. Jabby near midcourt. Sends it over to Smith. Smith looking for some options. Finds Jabby. Jabby gives it to Marks. Marks looking for a lane. Takes a jumper instead for two. It's no good, the rebound. He gets his own rebound. Here's another jumper for two. That was no good. Almost a good second chance there by Smith, but there was a whistle before anything could happen. And right now, the, the uh, stat right now, Vulcans have yet to make any baskets. Their field goal percentage is at zero as they've just been missing shots for the time being, but hopefully that trend kind of changes itself as we're able to get some shots into the basket as we go move forward here mm. so far. Yeah, you're right. The two points came from two Armin Marks free throws earlier on, so now... Now we're going to have a foul on the court, and Slippery Rock is going to get possession here. Drew Cook with the foul. D Drew Cook with the foul, a recent sub for the Vulcans. He gets his first of the game, and California with two fouls now. Near side, Malcolm Richardson with it, sends it underneath. Layup for two, good. It is 10-2. That was a beautiful pass by Slippery Rock, getting it underneath to the open man underneath the basket. Easy layup for them as they take the eight-point lead. Jabby finds Cook over on the far side. Cook scrambling, sends it underneath. And there's a whistle. It was like, uh, or excuse me, I beg your pardon, Slippery Rock will be inbounding it. And I'm not quite sure what happened there, if that was a foul or if that was just a turnover on, on the uh, possession right there, but it looks like Slippery Rock is gonna get the ball right back. So now Kelvin Goodwin will be leading the charge back up for the Rock. Richardson sends it underneath and it goes out of bounds. It looks like it's gonna be California's ball. And a good change of possession there for the Vulcans, trying to get the ball back up the court now, trying to get something started, get the momentum back in their favor as they try to get back into this game here. Khalil Jabby sends it back up the court. 14.47 left to go in the first half. Brown gives it back to Jabby. We're on the far side, trying to work his way around the defenders. Finds it, Brown again. Far side for Cook. Now back in the middle for, for, uh, for Daniel Sapp. Back to Jabby. Jabby over to Sapp. Sapp tries to send it underneath. Brown with the layup, no good. The rebound comes to Cook. Cook jumper for two. That one's no good. The rebound comes to Sapp. Sapp layup for two. And I'm not sure if they're going to count that or not. I don't think they'll count that. It's going to be Slippery Rock ball. And it looks like they might have called Sap for a traveling there. I'm not quite sure if I saw the referee signal correctly, but it looks like they called a foul on him, or called traveling, I apologize. And now it's going to turn it right back over to Slippery Rock. Now here comes the Rock. The score is still 10 to 2. Butler with it. Cornelius Brown tries to set a pick. Sends it over in the far corner. Underneath, now back out, and he goes out of bounds, and it will be California's ball. And that pass going just out of bounds, so once again, Vulcans with an opportunity to take the ball back up the court. And I saw in that last possession, Drew Cook definitely staying out near the perimeter, trying to get shots to go, so we'll see if he does that again here. Cook with it, finds Jakubic right in front of the Slippery Rock bench. Jakubic tries to drive, but he gives it back to Cook instead. Cook hands it to Sapp, and there's a whistle before Sapp threw the shot up. Stopping the clock at 13.47. And Sapp once again turning the ball over in this case, and Slippery Rock getting another opportunity to go back up the court. The Vulcans definitely need to capitalize on some of these opportunities. They're getting turnovers at the other end of the court. Got to capitalize and get some points on those. Kelvin Goodwin 
takes a seat in in substitution for Abdul King, who checks into the game for the Rock. King has it now. He sends it underneath to, to Brown. Tries to go for the layup, but the rebound comes back to the Rock and scrambling. Drew Cook somehow comes up with it, but it goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Rock possession. It just didn't seem like anybody wanted the basketball on that possession. That thing was bouncing around, especially in the paint. Nobody was able to get a handle on it. Cook tried to grab it and go up the court with it, but it went out of bounds, and it'll be Slippery Rock's ball. So Malcolm Richardson has the ball now. Gives it over to King. Now back to Richardson. Far side, that's Butler. Butler has it. He has Richardson over on his right. Richardson falls to the corner. King comes back up to help. Now to Richardson, now underneath, now back out to Butler, jumper for three, that's good. It's 13 to two. That was a long three attempt by Butler. He made it though, it was a beautiful shot and Slippery Rock continues to gain the lead here. Jack, or I beg your pardon, Cook has it over on the far side. California looking for their first field goal of the day still. Brown tries to go to the hoop, but they're going to call a foul. It's going, it's going to be on Abdul King, and we're going to see California go to the free throw line. Brown once again trying to get down in the paint there, as you see, he knocks him over, and is just trying to charge the net, get that first field goal for the Vulcans. Didn't happen right there, but they're going to get free throw attempts to try to get some points on the board right now. Calvin Brown, first shot up. First shot, no good. It bounces out off the back of the rim. We see a handful of substitutions come in for California. Cook takes a seat along with Sapp. Jabby comes back out onto the court along with Tony Richardson. Brown, a 67% free throw shooter on the season, sends his second shot up, and it is good. It is now 13 to three. And these uh, free throws are letting the Vulcans hang around just enough, just down by 10 now. We'll see. If they can start getting those field goals, though, and make it a closer game. Butler has it over on the far side. Tries to find a lane. He finds it. Layup for two. That falls through. 15 to three. And Butler getting the last five points for the Rock. Doing a good job so far. Now Jabby jumper for three. No good off of the sides of the rim. Slippery Rock gets the rebound. Malcolm Richardson bringing it up the court. Finds a lane. Pushes Jakubek away from him. Tries to send it underneath, but the pass gets taken away by Marks. On over to Jakubic on the far side. Jakubic sends it back out near center court to Jabby. Over to Jakubic. 11.52 left to go in the first half. Marks sends it underneath. Layup for two by Brown. No good. The ball goes out of bounds off of the bottom of the basket. And the clock is going to stop at 11.44. And so. so with 11 minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the first half, your score, Slippery Rock 15, California 3. You are watching men's basketball here on CUTV. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Back here at the Convocation Center in California, Pennsylvania, The Rock leading the Vulcans 15-3 in men's basketball with 11.43 left to go in the first half. The Rock with, the pos with possession, bring it up the court. Butler has it on the near side, looking for a lane, finds it, drives down the baseline, but the pass gets taken away by Armin Marks once again. 
Now here comes Jabby. Over on the far side to Jackie Beck. Jumper for three. That's good. California with its first field goal of the day. It's a three-pointer by Jackie Beck. That was a big three-pointer for Jackie Beck and a good steal on the other end of the court by the Vulcans as they were able to take that ball up the court and Jackie Beck with a beautiful shot for three. It is 15 to 15-6 now in favor of the Rock. Butler has it now over on the far side. We see a substitution ready to check in for the Rock. Richardson has it. He sends it over on the far side to King. King with a layup. That falls through. And they are going to count it. It is 17 to 6. Tony Richardson with the foul. That was a good drive to the net by King. He was able to evade a few of the Vulcans defenders, get right in there, slip it in, and make a beautiful layup attempt as he was falling to the ground. So a good job right there by Slippery Rock and by King. King's shot is no good. So California gets the rebound, and here comes Jabby. Jabby being pressured by Richardson, but he finds Jakubic. Over on the near side, Jakubic almost gets the ball taken away, but is able to evade the defender. Far side, that's Jakubic, jumper no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock. Abdul King finds Malcolm Richardson. Over on the far side to Butler. Butler jumper for three, off the front of the rim, no good. He gets his own rebound, tries to drive for a layup, and there's a foul on the court. And Butler looks like a guy with a lot of energy so far for Slippery Rock coming out and just driving towards the net, trying to get that ball up into the paint and getting the attempts for Slippery Rock. As you can see what he did right there, just going to the net aggressively, ended up getting him a couple of free, uh, free throws here. Butler's first shot is up and it falls through. It's now 18 to six in favor of Slippery Rock. Antonio Butler is a 74.4% free throw shooter on the season. We see a substitution check in for both teams now. Richard Smith comes in for Calvin Brown for the Vulcans. Butler getting ready for his next shot. And it falls through. It is 19 to 6 in favor of the Rock. And Jackie Bick was able to get that first field goal for the Vulcans after that big steal. We'll see if he can't help on the other end of the court again to continue this offensive attack for the Vulcans to get them back into this game. Khalil Jabby gives it over to Marks on the far side. Armin Marks back to Jabby. Near side to Jackie Beck. Goes underneath to Smith. And they're going to, there's going to be a foul on the court. And it is going to be on Slippery Rock. It is Abdul King. That's his second foul of the game. It looks like he was trying to reach around to get the ball on that play. Didn't work out as he got the foul called on him. And now we have another whistle here. This time it's Frank Holloway with it. So Slippery Rock with two very quick fouls as California tries to inbound. And there's a layup attempt, but it gets foiled and rebounded by Slippery Rock. Ten minutes left to go in the half. Richardson sends it underneath to Jamal Godley. And it looks like we got a foul called on the Vulcans on that play as well. And it will be on uh, number 22, Tony Richardson. This will send Eric Raleigh to the free throw line. First shot up. Bounces off the back of the rim. Raleigh is a 54.5% free throw shooter on the season. Now we see Richardson take a seat with a substitution. Raleigh. Shot up, shot good. It is 20 to 6. And so far, a lot of fouls called on both teams at this point in the game. Six on Slippery Rock, five on the Vulcans. Interesting for the first half of this game. A lot of fouls being called. Very physical and aggressive play here early on. Smith has it now. Gives it over to Marks on the near side. Jakubek, jumper for two. Rolls out, no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock. Richardson brings it up the court now for the Rock. Goes underneath. Layup up, no good. The rebound comes to, to the Vulcans. Jabby brings it up the court. Breaking away with speed. Jumper, that's good. It looks two points. It is 20 to 8. And it looks like as the speed picked up on that play, the Vulcans were able to take advantage of that and use that to their advantage as they got down the court and got the two point try to go. Now this pass gets stolen away by Armin Marks. Marks brings it up the court. Layup for two, no good. Second chance, no good. Rebound. Falls down, and we're going to have a foul on the court. Josh Dombrowski 
laying it all out going for that rebound. Yeah, Josh Dombrowski coming up off the bench, and he comes in with a lot of energy, and he gets in, tries to get to the paint right there, and he gets knocked down as he draws the foul and is able to get free throw attempts. So now this sends California into the bonus. That is the seventh team foul against Slippery Rock. This is, this is a one and one attempt. Dombrowski's first shot is good. The foul was called on Cornelius Brown, and that is his first of the game. 9.07 left to go in the half. Dombrowski, 67% free throw shooter on the season. Second shot is no good. The rebound comes back to him. He finds Jackie Vick wide open for a three, and it rolls out. No good. The rebound, second chance, no good. Slippery Rock with control now. Back up the court. That's Goodwin. His shot doesn't fall through, but it looks like we're going to have another foul on the court. And as we go along in this game, with all the fouls that are being called, it seems that the team that makes more of their free throws is going to have a better chance to keep the lead in this game. That's going to be a big part of this game if this many fouls continue to get, uh, be, get called. So now Kelvin Goodwin will be going to the free throw line for the Rock. 8.54 left to go in the half. Goodwin, first shot up. First shot, good. It is 21 to 9. Now we're here, we are seeing Antonio Butler check back in for Abdul King, who takes a seat on the bench. Good one, ready, ready for his second shot. It's up. Just barely sneaks through. It is now 22 to 9 in favor of the Rock. And they, the Rock are making a decent amount of their free throws thus far, and that has helped them continue to keep the lead in this game, as right now they have 77.8 free throw percentage, so doing fairly well on the line. Jabby tried to send a pass over to Jakubic, but it got pushed away by Richardson, but Jabby gets control of it again. Far side to Marks, jumper for three, no good. Rebound comes to Brown. He sends it back up for Goodwin. Here he comes, through the paint. Layup, no good, second chance, no good. Rebound comes to California. Here comes Jabby. Jabby, far side to Jakubic. Jakubic sends it back out to Jabby, being pressured by Butler. Cross court now to Marks. Tries to go underneath to Smith, but there's going to be a foul on the court. And thus far, the pace of play has been slowed quite a bit by these fouls. And it seems like when the play starts to speed up, the Vulcans have a little bit of an advantage. Their speed game has worked well for them thus far. And that's where they've gotten a couple of their field goals is when the game is going at a fast pace and they're able to go up and down the court. The foul is on Cornelius Brown. And that is his second of the game and Slippery Rock's team eighth foul. And that sends Richard Smith to the line. His first shot is up and good. California hits double digits. It's 22 to 10. And Richard Smith, a 57.5% free throw shooter as he makes his first one there. See if he can't sink his second one as well. Second one up, second one good. It's 22 to 11. Silver Rock's lead is trimmed down to 11. They'll be inbounding it from the right side. 8.15 left to go in the half. And I've noticed too, Cody, as this game's gone along, a lot of the shots, uh, shots, shots attempted by the Vulcans have been very good. They just haven't gotten the bounces to go their way. Unfriendly bounces, yeah. That's right. Definitely. See if Luck can turn around for the Vulcans as Butler drives down the lane. His shot is no good. The rebound comes to Pratt. He sends it back out to Richardson. Shaquille Pratt checks into the game. Now Butler has it over on the far side. Butler jumper for three, long three, no good off the front of the rim. Rebound comes to the Vulcans, here comes Jabby. Jabby's shot is no good, he gets his own rebound though. Going for a second chance and that falls through. It is 22 to 13 and we're going to have a timeout called by Slippery Rock. That was a good attempt there by Jabby, just driving the net and being very aggressive, getting the field goal to fall and two more points up on the board for the Vulcans. Now, taking a look at the team leaders in terms of in terms of uh, scoring, you got to look at um, you got to look at Richard Smith. He's one of the people you might not have heard much about, but he can really provide 12.3 points per game on average, and also getting those rebounds with eight about eight and a half on average. That's right. Smith looks like the big offensive catalyst for this Vulcans team. And then we take a look at Slippery Rock. They got a couple of guys actually contributing so far to their offense throughout this season. Antonio Butler leading them in scoring and steals as well. And on top of that, Kelvin Goodwin dishing it out with the assists, and he's leading the team in minutes as well. And when you're on the court, you're, you're bound to provide, whether it be with rebounds or with total points. So it only makes sense as Goodwin takes the inbound. 
and brings it up the court. Being pressured by Jabby. Goodwin finds Richardson. Richardson driving down. His shot gets blocked, and there's going to be a foul called against the Vulcans. It looks like there's a little bit of contact when he went to get up and take that shot. I'm not quite sure what exactly happened, but the foul was called on the Vulcans as, once again, 15 fouls total between these two teams already. And the, call, or the foul was called against Drew Cook. That was his second of the game, and that will send Slippery Rock into the bonus now. And now we're going to take a look at some of the replays that we've had so far in this game. Like we said, the fouls have been a big part of it, but the Vulcans trying to get the ball back up the court. But so far, Slippery Rock has taken advantage of their opportunities. There is that long three attempt right there. And that was, that was uh, Antonio Butler. Butler with that shot. And there he is again, driving the net and getting the layup to fall as Butler has been very aggressive for Slippery Rock to this point in the game. Yeah, and he, he's our player to watch for a reason. But then on the other side of the ball, Jackie Beck with this long three point. That was the first field goal that the Vulcans had about five or six minutes into the game. And then, but Slippery Rock has been maintaining their lead as you see the layup there by Eric Raleigh. And um, it's, the score right now is 22 to 13. Slippery Rock has been showing control, but the Vulcans, they're still fighting like this shot here by Jabby. That's right, Jabby and Jack Quebec for the Vulcans have come up in the court and have been working down underneath. Is there you see Jet, or I'm sorry, uh, yes, Jabby going underneath in the paint and just being aggressive, giving that ball to the net and trying to get those shots to fall for the Vulcans. And in terms of stat rankings, Slippery Rock has the upper hand here in both score, in all terms of scoring, they're in fourth place in all categories, except scoring defense, which they're in third in. <laughs> yeah, and they do have a little bit of advantage, but the Vulcans could still get their offense rolling as we go along in this game. They could match Slippery Rock pretty much court, uh, point for point as we go up through the rest of this game. Malcolm Richardson's first two shots were no good, so the score remains 22 to 13, and California gets the rebound. Khalil Jabby is trapped over on the far side, but he finds Jakubic, and now he gives it back to Jabby. Near side to Daniel Sapp. Sapp finds Smith. Smith going for a layup. That falls through. It's 22 to 15. That was a beautiful layup there by Smith as he just worked his way underneath and just hit the easy layup in, and that gives the Vulcans a little bit of a, a momentum shift as they're now down only by seven. Richard. He finds, that was Goodwin at the at the top of the point, I beg your pardon. I almost said Richardson, but there was another one on his jersey, so he gets the points for the Rockets. Now 25 to 15, Jackie Beck has it. Over on the far side. Now back over to the near side for Jabby. Jabby finds Dombrowski. Far side to Daniel Sapp. Tries to go underneath Jabby. The shot is going to be no good. There's going to be a foul called before the shot happened. Now we'll see if Jabby can get up to the free throw line and get a couple to fall here for the Vulcans. Jabby, of course, is an 81.8% free throw shooter on the season. And what I, like I said before, the free throws are going to have a huge factor in this game. If the Vulcans are able to start making a few more of these, they can close the gap and make this a very close game. The foul was called on Malcolm Richardson. That is his first of the game. Jabby, shot up. Shot good. It is 25 to 16. That was a good start right there for Jabbies. He's able to make the first one, lining up for the second to make this an eight point game once again. Jabby's next shot is up and it falls through. California cuts the deficit to eight. It is now 25 to 17. And Jabby thus far leading the Vulcans in points in this game as he's helped this offense kind of keep them in this game as we go along. Goodwin has it underneath. He sends it back out to Frank Holloway, who takes a jumper for three, and that is good. Three points on the board. It's 28 to 17. Big answer there by Holloway and Slippery Rock as that three is going to erase pretty much that those two free throws that the Falcons were able to make. Now Jabby has it on the near side. He finds Jackie Bick. Jackie Bick gets bumped on his way in, and the shot is no good. The rebound comes to Butler, and here he comes. Antonio Butler finds Goodwin. Goodwin jumper for three. No good. The rebound comes to the Vulcans. Jabby, one on one. Butler, and Butler wins that one, but there's going to be a foul on the court as Jabby takes a hard fall onto the floor. And like we saw with Jack Beck on the play before, prior to that, and that time with Jabby, Slippery Rock playing very physical underneath. They don't want the Vulcans getting into that paint, it seems like. 
as there's the hard fall that Jabby took as there's a lot of contact right there between him and Antonio Butler. Butler gets the foul called on him. That is his first of the game and Slippery Rock's team 10th, which sends California into the double bonus. Jabby's shot is up and good and now we are seeing Richard Smith take a seat and Calvin Brown checking back into the game. 5.37 left to go in the half. The Rock leading by 10, pending Jabby's next free throw shot. It's up and it's good. The lead is now nine, it's 28 to 19. And Jabby making those free throws, big part of it for the Vulcans. He's been very successful at it and showing that again here today. Jabby with some clean defense, stumbles Goodwin, but good control there as he finds Richardson. Now sends it in the corner to Holloway. Holloway spinning around, tries to go for a layup, but it's no good, and the rebound comes to Brown. Jabby sends it way up court to Jakubek, but the pass goes in and out of his hands and flies out of bounds, so it will be Slippery Rock's possession. It didn't look on that one like Jakubek was expecting that long pass coming from Jabby as Jabby was trying to get the ball up the court fast. Jakubek just wasn't prepared to take that pass. 5.13 left to go in the half. Slippery Rock will be inbounding it. Led the way by Kelvin Goodwin. He gives it to Butler, who hands it right back. Met by Jabby at center court. Good defense there. Butler with it now. Tries to find a lane, but gets stopped. Hands it off to Goodwin over on the near corner. Jumper for three. That's no good. The rebound comes to the Balkans. Jabby with it. Gives it over to Daniel Sapp, and he leads the way up the court. Finds Jakubek. Jakubek with it now. Finds Dombrowski over to Jabby. Jabby sends it underneath the Brown. Now back out to Sapp. Layup for two is good. It's 28 to 21. And Sapp was able to just sneak his way underneath the paint right there. As the uh, Vulcans were able to find him getting towards the basket. And that was an easy uh, field goal attempt there for the Vulcans. So now Goodwin has it. Sends it over on the far side to Holloway. His jumper for three is good. It is 31 to 21. And that time Slippery Rock able to make the field goal fall as they were missing a lot of their three-point attempts, long three-point attempts earlier on. That time they got it to fall. Jabby with it is going to be called for a travel. We're going to see a substitution check-in for The Rock. Abdul King will be checking into the game. 3.59 left to go in the half. Kelvin Goodwin leading the charge. Spins around Jabby, finds his man, that's King. Now we're going to have a stoppage as there's going to be a foul call. So there's going to be a foul, call, foul called against California with three minutes and 47 seconds left to go in the first half. The Rock leading by 10, 31 to 21. You are watching California men's basketball here on CUTV. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple, because we care. Convocation Center in California, Pennsylvania. The Rock leading the way over the Balkans. And we just saw a foul get called against Josh Dombrowski right before break. So that will send Frank Holloway to, for the Rock to the free throw line. First shot is up and it is no good. Brown gets the rebound. Now California with control. Nick Miller checking into the game for the Balkans. Leads the charge back up. 
Miller has it, looking for an option. There's a push off that's going to be called here as he was trying to pass it to Jackie Beck. And the Vulcans are able to climb back into this game, Cody. They had, a, they had a large deficit to overcome. They're still down by 10, but they still were able to climb back into this game a little bit. Jabby and Smith, of course, leading the way on the score sheet. Three and a half minutes left to go in the half. King has it, looking for a lane, but he finds Goodwin. Goodwin has it. Hands it off to Butler. Butler takes it back out to center court. And there's a substitution ready to check back in for the Vulcans. It looks like that might be Smith over there. Butler jumper for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. The rebound gets kicked and soars out of bounds. It's going to be California's ball. And a point of emphasis on what I just said before the play resumed there. The Vulcans were able to overcome a 10-point first-half deficit in their last game to go on to win in overtime. So it seems like they will definitely probably turn it on in the second half, if anything, and try to get back into this game. They are a very good team in the back half of, of the game. Nick Miller brings it up for the Vulcans. He sends it over to Sapp. Sapp has it, finds Miller. Miller on over to Jakubek. 15 on the shot clock. Jakubek driving down, layup up, hits nothing. It's no good, the rebound by S Richard Smith is going to not count. And it looks like on that play they were going to call a travel on Smith as he went up for the rebound, came back down, and they called a travel on him as he was just about to go up and shoot another uh, field goal attempt right there. Two and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Kelvin Goodwin leading the charge. Sends it in the middle to Raleigh, and his shot is good. It is 33 to 21. That was a smooth pass right there by Goodwin to get it to Raleigh underneath, and it resulted in the two points for Slippery Rock. Jackie Beck finds Miller on the near side. Now he gives it to Smith. On over to Sapp. Sapp underneath to Tony Richardson. Back out for Sapp. His shot is up and no good. The rebound gets, gets juggled a little bit, and Slippery Rock comes down with control. Now here's Kelvin Goodwin. Looking for options. Pratt trying to set a pick, but he keeps it for himself, and his shot is good. It is 35 to 21. And we are going to have a timeout called by California. Oh, what a shot right there by, that was good one, I believe, as he made that layup as he went down into the paint. Just a beautiful handling of the ball right there as he just drove his way to the net and got those points for Slippery Rock. As right now, good one in Holloway leading the score sheet. There it is right there, avoiding the Vulcan defender right there and putting the layup home. And like I said, good one with seven points thus far in this game. Holloway, though, leading Slippery Rock with 12 so far in this game. There's under two minutes left to go in the game, or in the first half, I beg your pardon, not the game. Um, the first half of the game, if you will. Uh, and Slippery Rock is leading 35 to 21, which may seem like a really large deficit, but for California, that's definitely manageable. Like you said, they came back from a 10-point deficit, and it took them a while to get their first field goal of the day, but it seemed like once they got it, they were able to kick things into gear. That's right, once the pace of play picked up, the Vulcans were able to respond a little bit, get a little bit more momentum on their side. Jackie Beck has it on the near side. He finds Smith, goes underneath, layup is no good, rebound is juggled and controlled by King. He gives it on over to Goodwin. Here comes Goodwin. He has Butler at the point. But he look, he's looking for options of his own. Pratt coming in to set a pick, but Miller dodges it. Pratt has it now. On over to Goodwin. Goodwin jumper for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. Butler with the rebound. Sends it back out to Goodwin. Goodwin resets the offense. Sixty seconds left in the first half, and the ball goes flying out of bounds over to uh, the scorer's table as the clock stops with 59 seconds left. And that pass from Pratt didn't seem like Goodwin was ready. Goodwin was trying to cut down in to the inside of the court but as Pratt tried to pass it out to him once again, trying to get that ball moving very quickly and set something up. Unfortunately for the Slippery Rock that time, it didn't work out. And it looks like we might have a substitution here too for the Vulcans. Armin Marks checks into the game for Daniel Sapp, who will take a seat on the bench. California with possession, 35-21, the Rock leads. Khalil Jabby will lead the charge back up. Jabby gives it to Jakubic. 
Now to Smith. On over to Marks. Marks finds Jabby. Jabby trying to go through, but the Rock defense standing tall and gets the pass up. And here comes Goodwin. Goodwin trying to keep it for himself. He tries to go in the middle, but finds Butler somehow. And they're going to call a jump ball here as Tony Richardson stripped it away from Butler. But it's going to be a jump ball, and California gets possession either way. And very physical down low there between Richardson and Butler as they both were fighting to get possession of that ball. And it ends up being California's ball after a little bit of a scuffle you saw there underneath the basket. There's about a half second difference between shot clock and game clock right now. The game clock will be the first to expire. So California can hold it for their last shot here, but the pass gets taken away by Slippery Rock. Now the shot clock has turned off. Goodwin will take his time up the court for the Rock, and Slippery Rock will be going into halftime with the lead here. Goodwin leading the charge up. The shot goes through, but it will not count. The score remains 35 to 21, and the foul is going to be called on Goodwin. It looks like an offensive charge there by Goodwin. He tried to go hard to the net, and that'll leave 4.4 seconds left for the Vulcans to try to get the ball up the court quickly enough to get a decent shot attempt off before the half. Richard Smith will be inbounding it for the Vulcans. He has Jabby with him. Jackie Bick over on the near side. He comes off the charge. Jabby with it. Two seconds on the clock. Now one, the shot counts, but it is wide left. So the score going into halftime is 35 to 21 in favor of the Rock. And we'll see what the Vulcans decide to do when they come back in the second half. We'll see if they can be that second half team that we talked about, just like in their last game. After 20 minutes of play, your score 35 21 in favor of Slippery Rock. Second half action is next here on CU TV. NCAA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride. And I'm pleased to share the best news of all. Student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at D2SA.org. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. Thirty-five to twenty-one in favor of Slippery Rock after one half of play here at the Convocation Center in men's basketball action here on CU TV. If you are just joining us, my name is Cody Jeanette. Alongside of me is David Damon Matson, and we're delighted you could be with us today. Now, Damon, let's take a look at some of the uh, halftime stats of today. And take a look at some of the halftime stats. This game's had a lot of fouls in it, but aside from that, as you can see, the three-point percentage definitely going in favor of Slippery Rock, making six of 14, where the Vulcans are only one of eight, and a lot of turnovers as well. 12 for the Vulcans, 10 for Slippery Rock. And as we go on through this game, we'll see if those turnovers start to lessen and the pace of play picks up throughout the rest of this game. Yeah, and that's one story that you were saying about the, about the total fouls. There were 19 total fouls in the first half, 10 by Slippery Rock and nine by California. So a very aggressive and physical first half of play here on the court at the Convocation Center. So the um, the two squads might be uh, might come out with the same strategy or might come out to play a little cleaner. Who knows? Time can only tell. That's right. As we take a look at some of the highlights from the first half, this game began fairly slow as the Vulcans actually were down quite a few points to start this game as the Slippery Rock, Slippery Rock was able to convert a lot of their field goal attempts. This one a long three-point attempt right here by Antonio Butler as he made quite a few points so uh, for Slippery Rock in that first half. As here he is again driving into the paint and making what was an easy layup for him on that. And as we moved on through the rest of the first half, the Vulcans were able to come back and answer just a little bit. That was a three-pointer by Jackie Beck, the first points our field goal points that half for the Vulcans. And then it was just a back and forth kind of game as there's a good layup there by Kelvin Goodwin of Slippery Rock as well. 
So Slippery Rock gets the first inbound and turns the ball over very quickly within the first 10 seconds of the half. So now Khalil Javi will lead the charge back up for the Vulcans. Javi finds Mars, who gives it to Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck near side to Brown. Brown hands it over back to Jack or er, to, to, to Javi. Now underneath to Smith, and there's a foul called on the court as he was trying to make a shot. And once again, another foul called as Richard Smith was going hard towards the net on that one. As he gets a chance to have some uh, free throw opportunities right here. Richard Smith at the free throw line. First shot up. And the first shot is good. California strikes first in the second half and makes it 35-22. to 22. That's already one thing different that California did that Slippery Rock didn't was strike first in half. And that's going to be the biggest thing for the Vulcans is if they can hold up on defense and convert their opportunities to score. That's how they're going to get back into this game as they have now cut the lead down to just 12. 35-23 to 23 is the score. 19.30 left to go in the second half. It's just underway. Butler has it over on the near side. Looking for a lane, he finds it. Drives up to the lane, but he gets fouled on the way in. Jackie Beck took a hard fall. And it looks like that's who the foul is going to be called against. And Jackie Beck and the Vulcans looking to cover that paint as they were trying to avoid the charge to the net there, which is what Antonio Butler has done a lot in this game already. Now underneath, that's Jamal Gattley. It is going to be California's ball now. And a good opportunity for the Vulcans right here as they score those two points on the free throws. Now they get the ball right back going up the court, trying to continue to cut into this deficit. And as we mentioned before, California overcame a 10-point deficit at halftime against Gannon to win that game in overtime. Jackie Beck sends it over on the far side to Marks. Marks gives it to Jabby. Jabby looking for a lane, but it gets closed up very quickly. Jackie Beck has it now. Near side to Brown. 10 on the shot clock. Brown gives it to Jabby. Five on the shot clock now. Marks, long jumper for three, goes through. It is 35 to 26. And Marks was able to answer to Antonio Butler's long three that he had in the first half. Another long three attempt right there, and beautiful job by Marks. Cuts even more into the deficit for the Vulcans. And the shot clock was winding down. It was more like a desperation shot as this three-pointer goes up by Holloway. It's no good. Rebounded by Jabby, and here he comes. Jabby gets his shot tipped away and rebounded by Slippery Rock. Butler has it now over on the far side. Spinning away. Nice spin move, but his shot is no good. Off the front of the rim. Jabby with the rebound, and here he comes. Jabby resetting the offense. Far side to Marks, now back to Jackie Beck. Near side to Brown. Brown goes underneath, that's Marks. Marks pushing away the defender, layup up, and there's going to be a foul on the court. And uh, the Vulcans looking to be very aggressive thus far on offense. They're getting to the basket, being very aggressive. And thus far it's paid off. They've started out this second half on a 5-0 run, pending these free throws right here, and I'm sure that's the way they wanted to come out starting the second half. Good job thus far. Armin Marks coming into today's game was a 70% free throw shooter, and he makes that one to make it 35 to 27. And Marks, of course, one of the seniors on this team, one of the leaders, as he's trying to motivate his teammates to get back into this game with 17.52 on the clock in the second half. Second shot is up and no good. The rebound comes to Antonio Butler, who leads the charge back up. One hand pass to Goodwin. Goodwin, nice shot, no good though. Rebound comes to Brown. Brown looking for help, he finds Jabby, and here he comes. Jabby gets to Brown, near side to Marks. Marks looking for some options, goes underneath to Smith. Smith, jumper for two, short, and the rebound comes to Slippery Rock. It looks like Smith rushed that shot attempt right there as he was just short of the basket. Antonio Butler, Looked like he might have traveled, but there's going to be a foul called against California instead, and Coach Brown is not happy about it. Yeah, the entire California bench jumped up in protest to that call. They're getting very pumped up into the in, into this game as they're trying to get these fouls cut down here as we go on into the second half. So Slippery Rock inbounds it from underneath their own basket. Goodwin, long jumper for three. That's good. It is 38 to 27. And Goodwin's been, of course, very good from three-point range today. He's made quite a few of those three-point shot attempts today. 
Marks has it over on the far side. Finds Jackie Beck, jumper, no good. Rebound comes to Brown. Going for a second chance, and it falls through to make it 38 to 29. Great job by Brown right there. Got the good rebound, and then he was able to force his way back in to get a layup attempt to go through, keeping the Vulcans within nine. Butler has it on the near side. He finds Goodwin. He has Holloway underneath, but he's being defended by Brown. Finds Butler again. Looking for a lane. Finds it near the free throw line. Layup is no good. Almost gets his own rebound. Struggle for the ball, and it's going to be a jump ball. A big scrum right there for the ball. Is down at the bottom of the pile is Antonio Butler trying to get his own rebound, and the Vulcans are trying to jump all over that and get the ball back the other way. And it ends up being, looks like it might actually be the Vulcans' ball here. It is going to be Vulcan ball. Khalil Jabby will be inbounding it. He has Armin Marks with him. He gives it right back. 16-20 left to go in the second half. Jabby bringing it up court. Finds Marks. And swings it over to the far side. Back to Jabby. Now he finds Marks again. Marks going through the paint. Layup up. The rebound is tipped a few times and controlled by Slippery Rock. More specifically, Malcolm Richardson, who sends it up to Goodwin. Goodwin goes underneath, looking for Holloway. And there's a whistle on the court just as he was making his shot. There was a whistle blown, but that was great defense right there by Calvin Brown getting back and blocking down that layup attempt. That was an amazing block right there on defense as it helped keep the Vulcans, or helped keep the Rock from scoring right there and keeping the uh, score right where it was. And Coach Brown was confronting the ref a little bit. He was not happy about the previous chains of calls that were made, but now we're going to take a look at some replays, more specifically how California has been able to maintain steady control in the, in the beginning of this half. That's right. You saw Armin Marks making that three-pointer right off to start the half. A good job, but an answer right there by Slippery Rock, and there's the physical play of Calvin Brown down underneath. He's showing a lot of that though thus far in this half playing physical on offense, and as you saw just in that last play, on defense as well. Now taking a look at the PSAC West standings, Damon, it's been a, uh, there's been a few games going on here today that can really impact these standings. I know Gannon won earlier over Seton Hill, and UPJ took a loss earlier today as well. Yeah, that's right. And of course, you see Gannon is ahead of Slippery Rock and California. Both these teams probably going to check out that score later. Gannon just beating Seton Hill 53-51. to And then, of course, Edinburgh beating Pitt Johnstown, who's just behind California, 77-61. to And Edinburgh's team, you've got to watch out for as you move on through the rest of this season. They are really on fire right now, playing great basketball. So the score here between the Rock and the Balkans is 40-29 to in favor of Slippery Rock. We have just under 16 minutes left to go in the, in the game. Jackie Beck has it. He gives it to Jabby. Jabby looking for a lane, but he goes far side to Marks instead. Marks goes into the corner for Brown. Brown trying to push away the defenders, draws a foul as he was going for the layup. And that's what Calvin Brown's been able to do thus far. Even when he goes aggressively to the basket, he's able to draw those fouls. If he's able to capitalize on some of these free throw opportunities, that'd be huge for the Vulcans to cut down this deficit. Calvin Brown coming into this game is a 66.7% free throw shooter. His first shot is up, and it sinks through to make it 40-30. to 30. And as we rolled along through this game, too, we found out we had that question at the very beginning. Was this going to be a fast-paced, high-scoring game, or was it going to be a nitty-gritty defensive struggle? And thus far, it seems to be that way as it's 40-30 to 30 right now in favor of the Rock. Richardson gets the rebound off of Brown's second shot. And he brings it up to court. He's going to keep it for himself. Go for a jumper, and that's good. Make it 42-30. to 30. That was a very smooth shot, too, by Richardson right there as he was able to fade away and make that shot go through. Jabby has it now, sends it near side to Jakubic. Over on the far side now for Marks. Marks finds Jakubic again. Back to Jabby. Jabby's shot gets blocked, and there's a foul drawn in the process. Yeah, that time Jabby tried to go up for the quick shot for two points, but the Rock defender ended up getting his arm in the way as that looked like it was number one. Malcolm Richardson got his arm on Jabby's, and that's going to get the foul called every time there by the refs. 
So that was Richardson's second foul of the game, and it sends Jabby to the free throw line. Jabby, an 82% free throw shooter coming into today's game. His first shot is up and good, and now we're seeing Drew Cook substitute in for the Vulcans. And Jake Jakubik will take a seat. Jackie Beck's been out on the court quite a bit as well in this game, so good to see him get a little bit of a rest. Drew Cook coming on out, and now Jabby going for his second free throw attempt. Second shot up, second shot no good, in and out of the hoop, and Malcolm Richardson gets the rebound. Richardson pushes away Jabby and draws the foul. And it looks like there's a little bit of a uh, physical battle going on between those two right now. Of course, Richardson getting the foul called on him. Uh, when he hit Jabby's arm as he was going to shoot in that time, it was called on, Rich, on Jabby. Now here comes Jabby up the court, tries to go for a shot and plows over Richardson. And those two going at it again. Richardson takes the fall, hard fall this time. As you can see here, Jabby getting the steal and getting the ball as he goes right towards the net. And Richardson was the one in his way, and he just tried to go right through him to get that basket. And you're right, over the last three plays, these two playing some physical ball back and forth against each other. Jabby at the free throw line. Once again, he's one for two. First shot up. First shot good. It is 30, 42 to 32, I beg your pardon. California cuts the lead back to 10. Now we're seeing Smith take a seat. And Brown checks back into the game. After the quick uh, start on offense by the Vulcans to start this half, it seems like it's been back and forth basketball as it's been about a 10-point lead for the Rock over the last few minutes of play. See if the Vulcans can't get a stop or two here and get that momentum back in their favor and cut this deficit even more. Butler has it now for the Rock over on the near side. Butler tries to go through, but the ball gets stripped away by Jabby. On the floor with it was Marks, and he got back up and was able to get it to Jabby. Bringing it up the court now. Jabby looking for a lane, telling his offense to come help him. Cook over on the far side finds Marks at the point. Near side to Jabby. 14-28, left to go in the half. Underneath, Tony Richardson's shot is no good. The rebound comes to the rock. Malcolm Richardson with it now. Resetting the offense. Finds Goodwin. Goodwin. Sends it back out to Pratt. Pratt's jumper for three is no good. The rebound comes to Cook. Cook looking for some help, but he takes it up the court for himself and finds Jabby over on the far side. Jabby layup for two is good. It is now 42 to 34. And it seems Jabby's playing a huge part of this offense so far in the second half. And we talked about in the last game for Cal against Gannon, he had 13 points in the second half in overtime. So he's playing, once again, a big factor late in the game for the Vulcans. Goodwin has it over on the far side, dishes it out to Holloway, whose shot is no good, and the rebound comes to Jabby. Jabby once again with it. We see a substitution ready to check in for the Vulcans. Brown has it now on the far side, goes underneath to Cook. Back out to Jabby. Jabby to Cook, jumper for two. That's no good, the rebound gets juggled. Marks has it. Also no good, there's a foul on the court. It's going to be Slipper Rock's ball. And unfortunate for the Vulcans there, that rebound was not able to be corralled in by Marks and ended up getting the foul called on them and that's gonna bring the ball back to Slippery Rock side of the court. Daniel Sapp checks into the game, Armin Marks takes a seat. Thirteen fourteen left to go in the second half. Slippery Rock will be inbounding it. Seems like we have a little bit of a delay right now. As looks like Coach Brown's trying to figure out what he's handling with his bench, but we get the play resuming here. 42 to 34 in favor of the Rock. California down by eight. Kelvin Goodwin with the ball now for the Rock, looking for a lane. Cuts to the outside. Goes back out to Richardson. Malcolm Richardson, jumper off the front of the rim, and it's going to be California's ball. That was an interesting sequence there by the Rock as Malcolm Richardson got Jackie Beck to fade away from him and he took that long shot. And luckily, even though there was a rebound, or there was a shot, the shot didn't make it, he had the guys there to get the rebound, but unfortunately the Vulcans were able to get the ball right back. Jackie Beck gives it to Drew Cook over on the far side. Cook, shot gets blocked. And we have a whistle right after the shot got blocked. 
And that looked like Eric Raleigh actually got his hand on that shot right there, and it just went out of bounds. So the Vulcans will still retain possession. Tony Richardson got the inbound. He finds Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck over to Sapp. Back to Jackie Beck again, looking for some help. He's trapped in the corner. Finds Richardson. Layup in and good. It is 42 to 36. California slowly getting back into this game. And very good work down, down there below by Smith and Richardson as they both were able to work in, in tight space right there, get the ball to, to each other, and we're able to get that layup to work. Kelvin Goodwin has the ball now. Finds Richardson. Malcolm Richardson looking for a lane. Keeping the ball for himself. Gives it off to Cornelius Brown. Brown's jumper for two is no good. The rebound comes back to him, though. Comes back to Butler, I beg your pardon, and there's a foul on the court. And Butler once again playing that aggressive style. He saw the rebound up in the air. And we look like we got a timeout actually called right here. It looks like it's going to be called. I think the Vulcans might have called a timeout. 11.51 left to go in the half. 42-36, your score. You are watching Vulcan men's basketball on CUTV. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Forty-two to thirty-six, the score here at the Convocation Center in California, Pennsylvania. The Rock over top of the Balkans. That's right. And I would actually like to apologize before we took the break right there. That was not a timeout called by the Balkans. That was actually a media timeout right there, and that's why we had the stoppage in place. So my apologies for the uh, for the wrong uh, signal right there. Butler's first shot goes through. We had a foul called against the Balkans right before the break, and Butler sends his first free throw shot through. His second one is up, and it's off the back of the rim and rebounded by Cook. 43 to 36 the score now, with 11.45 left to go in the half. Jakubek has it now at the point. Being pressured by Richardson, and he finds Sapp. Daniel Sapp looking for a lane, but comes back outside. Sapp over to Jakubek, 15 on the shot clock. Jackie Beck with it. Finds a lane through the paint. Layup in and falls through. It is 43 to 38. Beautiful layup right there by Jackie Beck. And Cody, it's been really great so far for the Vulcans. They've been giving the Rock a few points here and there, but they've been able to climb back into this game and make it just a five point deficit. There's going to be a foul called on the court. Looks like it's going to go against California. It will be called on Jackie Beck. And that'll be Jackie Bitt's third of the game as he's had a couple of fouls here those thus far in the second half. As he's been one of the guys scoring a few points for the Balkans as well today with five. Antonio Butler has it. And it finds Goodwin, but his shot gets blocked and controlled by California after a little bit of a little bit of a dribble, but Jabby has control of it. Goes over on the far side to Sap. Over to Smith. Smith driving the baseline, layup in and no good. The ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be California's ball. Unfortunate there for Smith that that shot didn't fall as he made the big block on the other end of the court as the defense for California has stepped up thus far in this half and is able to bring them back into this game and now Slippery Rock gonna bring it back up the court here. Kelvin Goodwin leading the charge for the Rock. Gives it on over to Richardson. Richardson driving the left side. Sends the shot in and good. It is 45 to 38. Now 
Now Khalil Jabby will bring it up for the Vulcans. Jabby with it. Goes over near side to Jakubek. Sap with it now, trying to find a lane in the paint, but doesn't have many options, so he gives it back out to Jabby. Near side, that's Brown with it. Brown layup for two and good. It is 45 to 40. That was a big answer there by the Vulcans. Brown able to get the layup to go as that erases the two points that Richardson was able to score to give the Rock a little bit more of a lead, but now 45-40 as we take down below 10 minutes in this game. Butler drove through the lane and got his shot up in and good. It is now 47 to 40. Now the Vulcans with it, Jakovic over on the far side. Looking for an option, finds Brown. Brown jumper, long two, no good. The rebound comes to the Vulcans though, and that is a good two points for Daniel Sapp. 47 to 42. Sap all over that rebound, was able to, nobody was really seeing where the ball was, was able to get right in there and get the easy rebound, lay up in two points for the Vulcans. Goodwin, jumper for three. Over the top of the backboard, it goes out of bounds. It will be California's ball, and we're gonna see Cook come in in substitution for Jackie Bick, it looks like. Yeah, Jackie Bick goes over to take a seat. And now it looks like the Vulcans are gonna try to take advantage of this turnover as they try to get the ball back up the court and continue to do what they've been doing, playing good defense and converting on their opportunities on the offensive side of the court with, of course, number 11, Khalil Jabby, leading the way thus far. Cook going through the paint, finds Brown. Sends it back out to Jabby, almost over his head, but he's able to maintain control. Here's Cook with it now. Sends a jumper up, no good. Second chance by Jabby, falls through. It's 47 to 44, timeout, Slippery Rock. And that is again Khalil Jabby leading the way on offense for the Vulcans. He now has 14 points on the game as he has been a big factor thus far. And the Vulcans have closed this gap now, Cody. It's amazing. Only down by three with 8.54 left in this game. It's hard to believe that this same Vulcan team was one that took over six or seven minutes to get their first field goal of the game in the first half. They only had two points for a long time off of two free throws by Armin Marks. That's right, and I, if I have it correctly, they were down by nearly 15 points at the start of this game. And you're right, no field goals made through the first, probably first part of the first, first half of the first half. And here they are now, just down by three, behind the rock. So now we're gonna take a look at uh, one of the many social media outlets that CUTV has a part in, including Twitter. You can follow the Twitter handle at CUTV underscore PA and keep up to date on current shoots, future shoots, and uh, little things that may be going on around the studio that, uh, and, we, and we'd like interaction with the fans and with the alumni. It's uh, fun to keep up with everybody on the Twitter stream. That's right, it's always good to interact with all of our followers and to keep up with what we're doing, especially with the sports shoots that we go do every week here with basketball and any of the other sports as well. 47 to 44. Slippery Rock still with the lead. California has not had a lead yet in this game, but the tides certainly are changing, at least right now they appear to be. That's right, you can kind of feel the momentum shift in this building thus far. The Vulcans feel like they have control of this game right now, and if they're able to make another stop here, they could possibly tie this game. Butler jumps up for two, that's no good. The rebound comes to California. Daniel Sapp with control, he finds Jabby. There's a substitution ready to come in for Slippery Rock. Cook has, draws the foul, and it's going to be two shots. That was a smart play right there by Cook as he drove to the net and was able to draw the foul. That's the kind of thing that if a play is not developing, as you can see, just going hard to the net, and he gets the foul call, and that's the thing you gotta do. If you can't get a play to develop correctly, just go hard to the net, and that is gonna be the result half the time. First shot is up and good. Cook coming into this game was a 72.3% free throw shooter. Second shot up, second shot good. California is now within one, 47 to 46. Incredible stuff now. This game is just a one point difference. Falcons playing great defense, making the most of their opportunities and just getting themselves back into this game. Jabby pressuring Richardson, he finds he finds Jamal Gatali over on the far near side. Gives, gives it back to Goodwin. 
Catali, jumper for three. Air ball, no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock. Goodwin has it. Goes underneath, gets his own pass somehow. And the shot is no good, but he draws a foul in the process. And that was an interesting sequence right there. It seems like Slippery Rock was able to control that ball even with all the craziness that was going on. And the foul, Calvin Goodwin able to draw it. And he gets a couple of free throw opportunities right here. So Goodwin will be going to the free throw line. There are exactly eight minutes left to go in the half. Goodwin, first shot up, first shot good. Goodwin coming into this game was an 85.4% free throw shooter, one of the top free throw shooters on this Rock team. 48 to 46 is the score, and it is now 49 to 46. So Slippery Rock gets the lead back to three. Nothing hurt here for the Vulcans, though. You just got to go right back up the court and continue to work your offense that you've had all of this half and continue to get points. Now there's going to be a foul on the floor. Before any shot could uh, go off, the clock will stop at 7 minutes and 50 seconds left to go. And it looks like that call was, that foul was called on Holloway. And it looks like we might have a media timeout right here, Cody. So the score is 49 to 46. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this half and California's big, big comeback that they're in progress of making here. And I always like to point it out, Armand Marks starting the scoring with that long, three-point attempt. Of course, Slippery Rock was able to get a few points at the beginning of the half to keep them right in line with California. But since then, the Vulcans have turned it up. They've been able to get a lot of drives to the net just like that one. And of course, the guy that we've been watching all half, Khalil Jabby, just playing great ball and making a lot of his points and making his shots as well. That has been the story is California's offense. How many points can they put up without giving up as many on the uh, defensive side of things? And there's still, there's still uh, a little under eight minutes left to play in this half. So uh, only time will tell as California has cut the lead down to three and it's been as thin as one by one point. And another social media outlet that CUTV um, always likes to be a part of is on YouTube. You can go onto the YouTube page, youtube.com slash CUTV Sports 1, no spaces or underscores. And you can see full broadcasts as well as highlight reels of uh, pr previous shoots that have been done. That's right, always good to see old shoots that we've done in the past. If you want to go back and watch a game that we've done, you can always go onto the YouTube page and check that out. You can also go on to the News Center CUTV page at youtube.com slash CUTV News Center. It's a, uh, another channel that CUTV has on YouTube. Now back to the game. We see Calvin Brown shoot the free throw, but it goes no good, and Slippery Rock will get the rebound. Kelvin Goodwin will lead the charge. Tali on the far side now finds Brown. Brown near side to Goodwin, now to Butler. Antonio Butler sends it over far side. Jumper by Goodwin, that is good for three. It is 49, or 52, I beg your pardon, to 46. That three-pointer hurts a little bit for the Vulcans. They kept this game very close, and that's gonna get a little bit more of a lead for the Rock as they were able to space themselves out away from the Vulcans who have been charging back into this game. Jabby has it. Goes in the far corner to Smith. His shot is no good. The rebound comes to California, but gets juggled a little bit. And Calvin Brown tried calling for the timeout, but he didn't get it, and he's called for the travel instead. And in that one, Calvin Brown just tried to get the rebound. And he was as he was falling to the ground, you're right, trying to call that timeout so he would avoid getting the traveling uh, foul called on him, but it wasn't able to do that. And it's going to be the Rock's ball as they go back up the court here with seven minutes left to go in the game. Kelvin Goodwin will bring it up for the Rock. Pressured by Jabby. Tries to go over for Butler right in front of his own bench. Antonio Butler with the ball. 6.43 left to go in the game. Goodwin has it. Jumper. Off the back of the rim, no good. Second chance attempt almost went through, but Jabby gets the rebound, and here come the Vulcans. Jabby finds Cook. Cook drives down the baseline, tries to go middle for Marks, but the pass gets taken away. And trying to drop the net again there was Cook, and that time just lost control of the ball. And now here's Butler trying to drive through, but he draws a foul on his way in. Coach Brown is signaling he traveled, but 
the officials give the call against California, and that is another foul. That is the team's eighth foul. And once again, Antonio Butler just going hard to the net as he always has done this entire game, and he draws the penalty once, or the foul, I'm sorry, once again right there. And Coach Brown, you're right, is very animated on the bench for the Vulcans. He's trying to get this going into the Vulcans' favor a little bit with the referees especially. So Butler's first free throw goes through. It is 53 to 46. Butler now has 11 points on the day. Second shot up, second shot good. 54 to 46 with 618 left to go in the half. Jackie Pick, or I beg your pardon, Jabby has it. He finds Jackie Pick over in the corner, but now back out to Jabby. Over to Smith. Pasket goes haywire and goes to the near side and where Slippery Rock has it. And yeah, what's getting interesting, that ball bouncing off the bottom of the of the uh, board right there, and it's interesting to see how that happened, but it ends up being Slippery Rock's ball. Now here's Butler with it, driving through. Going for the layup, no good. The rebound comes to Marks, and here he comes. One-on-one -on -one with Goodwin. Spins around, goes for the layup, no good. The rebound goes to Slippery Rock, but he couldn't maintain control and gets called for the travel. That was Cornelius Brown. And Armand Marks having an interesting uh, set of decisions to make right there as he's coming up the court. He could either charge the net and try for the layup like he did right there, and it looked like he had Jackie Beck open on the far side. It looks like there's gonna be a timeout called by the Falcons here. So both teams right now have eight total fouls. They're both in the single bonus. 5.36 left to go on the game clock. California down by eight points. That's right, and it looks like the lead has kind of opened up a little bit for the Rock, as you can see. There's the upcoming broadcast we have coming up. Of course, on Wednesday, we'll be at Mercyhurst. That'll be a big game for the Vulcans on both sides. And of course, Edinburgh on the 31st at IUP on February the 4th. And then we'll be back here in California against Clarion on February the 7th. That Mercyhurst game is going to be a big game because Mercyhurst is right at the top of the division in the PSAC West. So California going to be taking on the division leaders there next Wednesday at their, at their uh, home court. So California will be inbounding it from underneath their own basket. After the travel call, Calvin Brown gets the inbounding. He hands it right back to Jabby. Jabby wide open for a layup, rolls off the rim, no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock. Very unfortunate there for Jabby as he had. He rolled off the defender and was able to get into open space right to the basket and he was not able to get that to go, and Slippery Rock now has the ball. So now here's Butler with it. Butler trying to drive through the paint. Goes up for a layup, no good. The rebound comes to Brown, but he draws a foul before he could maintain control. And it looks like the Vulcans have lost a little bit of that momentum that they had in the first half of this second half of play. So we'll see if they can't gain a little bit of that back. They have five minutes left to go, of course, down by eight now, and we'll see if they can't come back and do what they were doing a little bit earlier on. Every player on the court right now for Slippery Rock has at least two personal fouls. Goodwin has two, Holloway has two, and Butler, Gatali, and Brown all have three. Those are the five men on the court right now for Slippery Rock as Brown's first shot went up and no good. It is 54 to 47 still. Or it was good, I beg your pardon. And now the second shot falls through. It is 54 to 48. And with the way fouls have been called in this game, that is a risky thing for Slippery Rock. They could lose a few guys to personal fouls as we go along in this Whoa, game. Whoa, look out. The pass came flying towards the California bench, and it looked like it went out of Cornelius Brown's hands, but it came flying towards the California players and the fans sitting right behind them. Look out. That was an interesting, I don't know what happened right there. Is you can see Coach Brown standing where he has been for most of this game, just off the bench. And you're right, that ball went flying into the seats. As this game is getting fairly intense as we roll along through the end of this game. So now that is the ninth team foul against California. So the next foul will send either team into the double bonus, depending on who commits it. Cornelius Brown is over on the, at the free throw line for the Rock. First shot up and it falls through, 55 to 48. And yeah, they'll be shooting fouls the rest of the way in this game because of that. And fairly uh, early on in this game too, with five minutes left to go, the shooting fouls already coming into uh, play in this game. 
Second shot up. Off the back of the rim. The rebound. Marks almost gets it, but he gets toppled over. And the ball goes out of bounds. And once again, the physical play just continues to be a factor thus far. As you alluded to earlier now, Cornelius Brown, of course, with four personal fouls for Slippery Rock as a lot of these players now within the four or three range as we go on to towards the last five minutes of this game. Yeah, every player that's on the court for the Rocks still has at least two personal fouls, and those two only being Goodwin and Holloway. We see a substitution ready to check in for the Rock, though, as well as California. Armin Marsh will be sent to the free throw line. First shot up. Bounces in and out, but since it's a double bonus, he'll get two shots. The substitutions check in. And it looks like we have Cook for the Vulcans, and then we have Pratt for Slippery Rock checking in. Cornelius Brown with his four fouls will take a seat. Second shot up and good. It is now 55 to 49 with 5.08 left to go in the half. Richardson with it, gets trapped, but he finds Catali. Over back to Richardson, down deep, but the ball goes flying out of bounds. It's going to be California's ball after an errant pass goes flying over the, to the Cal, or Slippery Rock bench, I beg your pardon. And that's a very big turnover for Slippery Rock, as that now gives the Vulcans the ball back, as they only need two offensive possessions in reality to get make this a tie ball game, so they're definitely still very much in this game right now. Jakubic has it at the point. Calvin Brown with it now. Now back over to Jabby. Jabby goes into the corner for Smith. Smith, layup, no good. The rebound goes to Slippery Rock, and now here comes Goodwin. Kelvin Goodwin with four and a half left to go in the half. Being pressured by Jabby, but he finds Catali. Catali to Pratt to Goodwin. Back to Pratt at the point. 16 on the shot clock. Butler sends it underneath. Now it comes back out. 10 on the shot clock. Quickly resetting the offense. Here comes Goodwin. Five on the shot clock. Goodwin loses control. Ball comes to California. Here comes Jabby. Jabby finds Marks. Marks layup. No good. And slam dunk by Richard Smith. 55 to 51. 357 left to go in the game. The crowd is pumped up now after that. What a transition by the Vulcans getting the turnover. Looked like the Rock was trying to just burn some clock right there. They were able to get the steal, take it back up the court. And though the first layup attempt didn't fall, Richard Smith coming in with the big slam dunk, making this, you're right, a four point game now as it's getting very, very interesting down the stretch. Look and at this the replay. replay. Oh my goodness, just amazing, Cody, amazing. So we had a 30 second timeout called by Slippery Rock. So that is the pause that we are seeing right now. The score 55 to 51. California really back into this now. It seemed like Slippery Rock was gonna be able to run away with it after California made the deficit one. But now all of a sudden, here they come right back. You can't count the Vulcans out. No, and you wanna talk about a momentum shift. That slam dunk right there just pumped you right. Everybody else in this building up is, it's a four point game. A little less than four minutes left to go, and the Vulcans trying to continue to ride this through the last four minutes and possibly take their first lead of the game. Now the ball goes out of bounds off of Arm and Marks on the inbound attempt, and that will send us to our last commercial break of regulation. So with 3.56 left to go in the second half, your score 55 to 51 in favor of Slipper Rock. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're watching men's basketball on CUTV. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care.
3.56 left to go in the game here at the Convocation Center. California down by four to the Rock, 55 to 51. Cal or California with a very manageable deficit here as Slippery Rock will be inbounding it. Slippery Rock looking to hold on to the lead. It will be Jamal Gatali inbounding it for the Rock. Goes to Antonio Butler and, Je and Drew Cook got hit right in the face and is down on the floor. He was looking at his nose or his mouth. Might have gotten a chipped tooth or something. It, by, the, by the looks of it, he was checking the, his face area. I hope he's okay. He's able to get back up on his own prowler, though. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened right there. Maybe an elbow that got up into the face of Drew Cook as we take a look at the replay. And it looks like that might have been what happened. As once that again, was Butler. That was Butler. Antonio Butler being very physical like he has been all game long. And looks like he got an elbow up into the face there of Cook. And looks like we're trying to sort out what's, what's happening here. But... Interesting, getting very gritty down near this down the stretch here as this game has gotten closer and closer as we've gone along. Yeah, Butler just being very aggressive. I'm I'm fairly certain that there was no intent behind that. It just looked like being in the wrong place at the wrong time, but that's the kind of thing you just gotta look out for. Limbs flying everywhere and um, keep an eye on keep an eye on for some missing teeth in the case of Drew Cook. Hope he's okay. He's uh, taking a seat on the bench. He's being tended by the medical staff. It looks like they are checking inside of his mouth by the looks of it from what I can see. So we'll hope that he's okay over on the over on the California bench. Yeah, we will hope he's okay. And uh, that is that is the kind of thing that you see down the stretch in games like this. You're going to be fighting for balls, and you're going to try to get to that basketball and get possession. And when you do that, uh, there's going to be a lot of physicality. So now here comes a, an inbound attempt. Almost got stolen away by the Vulcans, but it got popped up in the air a couple times and sent flying out of bounds. Jabby almost had it a couple of times, but Slippery Rock will get a retry at that one. In a way, that was actually probably a blessing for the Vulcans that that went out of bounds. It looked like Butler was going to the net with that ball all by himself. So, see what they can defend here now. 3.40 left to go in the game, and the shot will not count as Slippery Rock gets called for a travel. California will get control. And that uh, ball going out of bounds just before that was a blessing for the Vulcans there as they're able to get the ball right back. Down by four. We'll see what they can do with it. Make this possibly a one-possession game. Jabby lets it roll a little bit to conserve some time on the clock. Sends it over on the far side to Jakovic. Near side to Marks now. Three and a half to go in the, in the half. Smith goes underneath to Jabby, but Jabby can't control the pass. It looked like it might have been thrown a little bit too hard as he goes flying out of bounds, and now Slippery Rock will get control again. It looks like right there that Jabby was trying to just get his feet down and catch that ball all at the same time while trying to pay attention to the guy behind him, and it ended up going right off of him and turnover for the Vulcans. Now here comes Butler again, and this time Butler's going to be called for a travel as he was trying to control that inbound pass. Now California will be inbounding it at midcourt. California was looking for that all game long, it seemed, and they finally got it. Seems like they're getting a few calls in their favor, and that's something that they've wanted all game long as the Rock have tried to get a huge quick breakout, but it hasn't been able to work. Marks has it now to Jackie Beck on the far side. Goes in the middle to Smith. Layup for two, no good. Rebounded by Brown, but it is not going to count as there was a foul on the court. Play was whistled dead there before Brown was able to get the layup to go in, but that gives Richard Smith an opportunity at the free throw line to close the gap even more here for the Vulcans. Frank Holloway was the guilty party on the foul. That is his third personal foul. First shot up and good by Richard Smith. A 57.5% free throw shooter coming into this game. Makes it 55 to 52. Second shot up, second shot good. It is now 55 to 53, a two point deficit for the Vulcans. There is a lot of tension in this crowd right now. Butler has it over on the far side, defended by Marks, finds Goodwin. Goodwin driving the paint, sends it up for Holloway. That shot goes in, it's 57 to 53. And a quick transition for the Rock there as they were to get the ball up the court quickly and get the two points. Jackie Bick, right in front of the California bench, has it, sends it in the corner for Brown. Brown's layup is in and good. It's back to two, 57 to 55. Very quick response by Brown, getting his own, a layup of his own to go. And now it's again, a two point game. Gotta play defense right now here for the Vulcans. 
Goodwin gives it to Butler. Two and a half left to go in regulation. Antonio Butler with the ball, being pressured by Jackie Beck. 15 on the shot clock. Butler trying to find a lane, creates one for himself, layup in, and no good. The rebound comes to Slippery Rock, but it's going to be California's possession after a foul as the, as the ball was in the air. And it looks like Butler's getting a little bit frustrated now as he once again was trying to drive to the net and the foul was called with the Vulcans getting the ball back now, going down for some free throw opportunities. And if they're able to make both of these, we got a tie ball game, Cody. Makes it very interesting down the stretch. 2-12 left to go in the, in the game. 57 to 55 the score in favor of Slippery Rock. Jake Jakubek will be taking the free throw line. Jakubek is, is an 84% free throw shooter coming into today's game. First shot up. And it falls through, 57 to 56, California with a one point deficit now. If California ties it here, it will be the first time the game was tied since the score was 0-0. Second shot up. And it falls through. California has tied this game up with 2.12 to go, 57 all. And that's the kind of bounce that the Falcons were not getting earlier on in this game. The ball rolling in for the free throw to be able to be converted. And now we got a tie ball game with just about two minutes left. California still has not had a lead in this game yet. But now they're right back in the thick of things. Holloway has it on the near side. And it's going to be a timeout called by Slippery Rock. With 2.01 left to go in the game, we are still tied at 57. Not surprising that Slippery Rock calls the timeout right there. The momentum has definitely been on the Vulcan side of the court this entire half for the most part. And they're just trying to slow that down a little bit, gain their feet underneath them a little bit, and handle what's been going on right now as the Vulcans have tied this game. Amazing stuff. Well, while we have a quick moment, I'd, uh, it's going to be definitely far distant into the future from the time they're watching this, but we recorded this date January 24th, 2015. I'd like to wish my father and grandmother, who will both be watching this game later, a very happy birthday. We're born on the same day, very ironically enough. So, yeah, so happy birthday wishes to them as we see Slippery Rock going to be inbounding it with 2.01 left to go in the game. Try to get them a Vulcans win here today as well, Cody, definitely. What a, what a present that would be. Goodwin has it now. Kelvin Goodwin finds Butler, tries to drive through the paint, but he gets swarmed by white jerseys and forces it back out. Five on the shot clock. There's a whistle. Looks like it's going to be a push-off is going to be called here. It looks like it was called a Calvin Brown right there, so that'll give free throw opportunities to number 30, Cornelius Brown for Slippery Rock as he tries to get the Rock back into the lead. And that is Brown's fourth personal foul of the game. We're seeing Jackie Beck over on the far side of what, by the scores table and might be checking in. And Slippery Rock takes the lead again, 58 to 57. But Jackie Beck is actually substituting in for Drew Cook. And now we're seeing Malcolm Richardson substitute in for Kelvin Goodwin for the Rock. 1.42 left. Cornelius Brown at the free throw line. First shot was good, and the second shot is also good. It's now a two-point game, 59 to 57. And it looks like Eric Raleigh coming on the court as well for Slippery Rock, as now the Vulcans bringing it back up the court, down by two. Jackie Beck has it on the near side. 90 seconds left to go in the game. Jabby to Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck over to Brown. Brown better be careful, he has four personal fouls here. Smith draws the foul as he tries to go up for the shot. It's going to be 121 left to go in the game. And Smith getting another great opportunity here to get the Vulcans tied up with Slippery Rock. He made a couple of very clutch free throws earlier on. See if he can't do it again right here. The foul was called against Eric Raleigh. That is his second. Smith's first shot is up and good. Richard Smith has been doing fairly well here free throw wise in regards to his uh, free throw percentage coming into today's game. And it's worth noting that brings him up to 11 points in this game as he goes for a second opportunity, second most on the Vulcans in this game. 
His second shot goes off the front of the rim and rebounded by Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock still has a one point lead here. And they'll bring the ball back up, led by Kelvin Goodwin. And Slippery Rock will call their next timeout to stop the clock at 110. And in a game like this, this is where a lot of these strategical timeouts come into play. You're trying to get the right guys out on the court, trying to set up the right system to try to defend, get your offense going. And right here, that is what Slippery Rock is doing, trying to set themselves up to keep hold of the lead. Two players right now that are on the court for Slippery Rock, pending they don't have any substitutions after the timeout, have four personal fouls, Cornelius Brown and Antonio Butler. They both have four. And also worth noting, Frank uh, or Holloway, Frank Holloway and Another player for the uh, for the Rock, Jamal Gatali, have three personal fouls. So lots of fouls out there on the court right now for the Rock. But that's also to you got to take into consideration that Calvin Brown for the Balkans also has four personal fouls and he's out there too. That's right, and, all th and those three, uh, Butler, Holloway, and Brown, all scoring double-digit points for their teams thus far in this game. So it'd be, big, it'd be a big loss for both teams. One minute left to go in the game. One minute remaining. Butler has the ball now, 10 on the shot clock. Here we go. Antonio Butler finds a lane. No, he goes outside. Jumper for three, off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound gets tipped and controlled by Slippery Rock. The ball gets kicked. But it looks like there's gonna be a foul called against California here. And that one's called on number 10, Drew Cook, as the Vulcans are trying their hardest to get to that rebound off of that shot as it goes up in the air. Three guys going to get, get to it. And Slippery Rock coming up with the ball. True Cook trying his hardest to get to that. And unfortunately, Slippery Rock getting the ball. Holloway's shot is up and good. It is now 60 to 58. That gives Holloway 17 points in this game, tied for the most with Kelvin Goodwin for Slippery Rock. He's been a big factor in this game. Jake Jakubic substitutes in for Drew Cook. Second shot is up and good, and now we're seeing a Slippery Rock substitution. Eric Raleigh checks into the game for Frank Holloway. Now here comes Jabby. Jabby gives it to Smith who finds Jakubek. 37 on the clock. There's going to be a whistle here as Jabby took a hard fall over on the far side. The shot clock has been turned off here with 34 seconds left and Jabby will go to the free throw line. These are big free throw opportunities for the guy that's been very clutch in this game for the Vulcans. Jabby leading the way in scoring. If he can make these two, it makes it a one point game and then the Vulcans really gotta buckle down, get that ball right back and try to get their first lead of this game with about 30 seconds left in this game. Jabby's shot is up and it falls through. 69 to 51, now we're seeing a handful of substitutions come in for Slippery Rock as well as California. Drew Cook checks back into the game for Jakubik. 61 to 59. 34 seconds left to go in the game. The shot clock has been turned off. Jabby sets. Second shot falls through. 61 to 60. California calls a timeout. And you can feel the tension in this building building up. I mean, this is just a one point game with 30 seconds left. The, the kind of basketball game you hope to call in any kind of situation. And this has just been an intense game all around. And we're just waiting, hoping to see the Vulcans take that first lead of this game. And had you told me that this is going to be a one point game at the beginning of the first half, within the first half of the first half, if you will, I would have never believed you. California really busted it out of the gate uh, after halftime. Definitely changed something in their game strategy, whether it be just playing cleaner ball all around or getting some more opportunities on offense or more rebounds on defense. You know, it could be anything, or it could be any combination of, of any of those. But something definitely changed in California's favor. It definitely did, and it seemed like Coach Brown probably had a good speech at halftime for their for his guys in the locker room that, like they have done, like in their last game against Gann, it got them to be a great second half team, play good defense, and get right back into this game. And that's where the Vulcans are, and you're right. If you had told me it would have been a one-point game, after that first half, I don't know if I'd have believed you because <laughs> it just didn't look good right off the bat for the Vulcans. It definitely didn't. California was down by 14 at halftime, 35 to 21, and it took them well over five or six minutes to get their first field goal of the game. And now here they are within one point of the Rock. 
34 seconds left. The Rock will be inbounding it. It's Gatali. Gatali runs down the baseline. Finds Butler. Butler gives it to Holloway. And finds Goodwin. 30 seconds left. And Marks with the foul. Stops the clock at 28. And that's what you got to do now in this situation. You got to take these fouls that you're going to need to stop play. That way Slippery Rock doesn't kill the rest of this clock. And just hope that they don't make their free throws and get right back up the court and get your shots and make them if you can for the Balkans. So Kelvin Goodwin will be going to the free throw line. First shot up, first shot good. It is now 62 to 60. Jackie Beck checks back into the game for Drew Cook. And also Eric Raleigh checks into the game for Frank Holloway. Of course, Kelvin Goodwin very good at the free throw line. So tough guy to foul in this situation. He's very good in this kind of situations, but have to take what you can get. 63 to 60 after the second foul shot falls through. Malcolm Richardson now checks into the game for Kelvin Goodwin. Here comes Khalil Jabby and the Balkans. Jabby being pressured. Here's Jakubic. 18 on the game clock. Jabby with it. 13 on the game clock. Jumper gets blocked away. Jakubic sends a three-pointer up, but it will not count as it was well after the whistle. As Khalil Jabby, yes, was able to draw the foul right there. And it is unfortunate the whistle got called in that case because the ball was batted away, and Jackie Beck was able to sink that three-point shot, which would have tied this game up. But the foul was called, and that gives Khalil Jabby a chance at the line to cut into this deficit again. Khalil Jabby at the free throw line. Cook is ready to substitute in for who looks like Calvin Brown. And a couple of substitutions ready to come in for Slippery Rock as well. There's just under 12 seconds left. First shot is up and good. It is now 63 to 61. We're seeing Eric Raleigh check out of the game as well as Malcolm Richardson for the Rock. And Cook comes back into the game for Calvin Brown. Khalil Jabby at the free throw line. Sets. Second shot up, and it falls through. California's back to within one, 12 seconds left. Let's see what happens. And they're gonna have to draw the foul right here like they just did and send a man to the free throw line as they... Hope for a quick rebound. Absolutely, hope for a quick rebound, hope for a couple missed free throws and get the ball right back up the court. And it's two shots right here for Antonio Butler. The foul was called on Khalil Jabby. That is his fourth personal foul of the game. There's 10 and a half seconds left to go in regulation. Antonio Butler at the free throw line. First shot up, and he misses it. The score remains 63 to 62, and now we're seeing Jakubic sub back into the game for Cook. That's a big miss right there by Butler's that is now going to only make it a two-point game. If he's able to make this second one, it'll only be a two-point game. So the Falcons very attainably could tie this game or even take the lead as it looks like there's going to be a timeout called here by the Falcons. California with the timeout here. Ten and a half seconds left. They're down by one. Antonio Butler still has one shot left. If he does make it, California gets an automatic inbound. If he misses it, then they'll have to get a rebound and make a quick shot with the 10 seconds that are left. That's right. It's going to be a fast pace last 10 seconds. Either way we look at it, and it's going to be an exciting finish in this last 10 and a half seconds. I'm sure people are on the live stats feed right now just waiting for this game to update to see what happens with the 10 seconds left in the second quarter, but it remains. One point deficit for California. Butler still has one shot left. He's a 74% free throw shooter coming into today's game and has fared fairly well in terms of offense. He has 12 points on the day today. No player for Slippery Rock has less than three personal fouls on the court right now. Shot is up and he sinks it. It is 64 to 62. Here comes California, what might be California's last rush. Jabby with it now. Seven seconds left. Finds Jakubic. Jakubic looking for a shot. Can't get much of anything. That shot gets blocked. Rebounded by Eric Raleigh. 
and the ball goes flying into the air. Slippery Rock comes away with the win on this one. Jackie Bex sits on the ground, has to be helped up by his teammates. A heartbreaking loss for the Vulcans here today. Very difficult loss for the Vulcans to take. They were battling back this entire second half, and they were right there. They had the chance to take the lead, and just too little too late in the end, and unfortunately they fall by two here to the Rock. So California will be traveling up to Mercyhurst next Wednesday for their game at Mercyhurst, and we will have coverage of that for you right here on CU TV. For myself, Cody Jeanette, and my partner, Damon Matson, our director, Gary Smith, in the truck, as well as the entire crew that's on hand here today, working so hard to bring this broadcast to you. We wish you a good night, a good day. We will see you next time.